In this video, we'll be covering Data Definition Language, DDL. DDL is used to either add or remove a database object. Now, we'll be covering three main DDL functions, and they are Create, Alter, and Drop. So let's get started. Open your SQL Server Management Studio, just like I have, and connect to your database engine. You can either hit on this plug, or you can uh, open the connection here and select Database Engine, and then you can make a connection. I'm going to make my connection with uh, SQL Server Authentication. However, you can do the um, Windows Authentication. If you do not know how to connect to SQL Server or you do not even have Management Studio installed, check out my previous video. We cover all that information in there. Okay. Okay. Now that we have that out of the way, click on New Query. Now we have a nice Query Canvas where we can start to type in some syntax. Toggle open the databases here. We have AdventureWorks 2019, AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2019. If you are following through my videos, then you should have these first two databases. Because I said DDLs are used to add and remove database objects, I don't want to make any modifications onto these databases that we downloaded from Microsoft's website and restored. So we are going to start with our create statement by creating a new database. Okay, so create statements. We will start by creating a database called, and this is the syntax, create database uh, demo DB. Oh wait, I have a database called demo DB already. Okay, now you know we can have the same database created twice. So I want to call this test DB. And then I will close, I will end my, uh, my syntax with semicolon. It's not required, but you know, it's something that we do in SQL Server to just show the end of the statement. So select the query block and execute. It says completed successfully, but we don't see it. So right click on databases and refresh. There we go. We have a test DB. So let's see if there are any tables in here. And we don't. So we want to create tables in our newly created database. Before we can do that, you see here at the top, we have master. There are multiple databases in here. But I want to create my tables in my test DB. So what we can do is that we can type in use and we say test DB and then execute. It should change that up here. Execute and there we go. Now we can have test DB and anything we're about to create will go into that database. Now you can either use the syntax or you can just click on here and select whatever database you want. Okay. So now Let's create a table. Now the syntax to create a table goes like this. Uh, no, sorry, I, I wanted to make a comment, but I don't. So you have your create table command, then you pass in the table name. Okay, then you open parentheses. Now in here is when you're about is where you're about to specify the column names in the table that you just want to create, right? So you want to have column one and you want to specify the data type for the column and you want to have column two and the data type for column two okay so this is the syntax in creating a table now in this new database we are going to create two tables the first table that we will create is product i already have a script prepared just so i can be quick let me remove um the sample script that I put in here, but you can as well do a comment. You see here, you can do Control K, Control C, depending on what you're doing to toggle it, or you can click on this icon here at the top to comment it out. Okay, so we are about to add a new table in our test DB database called product. It's going to have a product ID, and the product uh, ID data type is going to be integer, and the product name is going to be characters. That's what we call varchar, and the length of the string is 50. Okay. The product number is also going to be characters and the length of the string should be 50. For product description, maybe I can go a little bit higher. I want to make it 150 so that I can have a very lengthy description. Okay. And then I also want to have a new use flag, which is an integer column. So I'm going to create this table here, create, it says successful. So let's refresh our tables again and see now we have a product table. So let's toggle that open. Let's go to columns. And now we see all the five columns that we wanted to have. They are on there. So let's add one more table. Um, we're going to create a customer. OK, 
Okay. Now this customer is supposed to have a customer ID, the first and last name, middle name, and the phone number. And again, it's going to have integers and varka as well. So we will create this new table as well called customer. And where is that? Refresh. Okay, so now we have customer as well. We go to columns and there, there it is. Okay, so now we've seen how to use the create statements in a DDL. We've created a database. We've created tables. Well, we can as well create one more thing. You see in here, we have dbo.customer, but when we were creating customer, there was no nothing called dbo in the name we provided. What, what the dbo here means is that it's a schema. Schema holds a collection of database objects, okay? Schema holds a collection of database objects. And uh, dbo is a default schema that comes with SQL Server. It means database object, but you can create your own. So any object that we are creating, it is organizing them in that collection dbo, okay? So we can choose to add a schema by ourselves. So we can do this by saying create schema. And we want to call this schema um, staging. Now, before I hit create, let me show you where schemas go in SQL Server. Now, we came to tables to see the tables. For schemas, you have to go to security. And then you go to schemas. Now, you see on here, we see the DBO. Now we don't have the staging that we are about to create. So let's see. So create schema, select that query block and execute. So refresh schema. And where is that? There it is. We have staging as a schema. Okay. But then it is not used. If we go back into our tables, you would realize that all the tables are still under the DBO schema, but we'll see how to do that in a few. Okay. So we move on to alter statements, alter. Also, a statement, just like the name suggests, is used to modify database objects. We can use it to delete columns, add new columns, and all that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is that we want to check our customer table and see if we added email to the customers because we would love to send them some emails and then we don't have them. So, a few things. We are going to do alter statement where we are adding column to an existing table. And then we are going to do an alter statement where we are changing an existing column, okay? And we're also going to do an alter statement where we are removing. So we're going to do three things, removing an existing column, okay? So right now we look at a customer table. There are no emails in here. So we want to say alter what? We want to alter a table. And what is the table name you want to alter? We want to alter the customer table. And then what do we want to do? We want to add email, email address. And the data type of the email address should be characters and the, the length of the string should be at most 100. Okay, so let's execute. Okay, completed successfully. Now refresh columns. Nice, now we have email address. Now we also want to see how we can use alter table to change an existing column. So let's say we wanted to change data type for phone number from integer to, to characters. This is how we do it. So I'll just copy this statement here. We are going to alter the same table and then alter again a column this time around. And the column we want to alter is the phone number, phone number. And what are we trying to do to that? We are trying to change the data type from integer to characters because now I want to be able to type in some numbers dash, you know. So this is how I want the, the phone number to look. Let, let me just give it 50. And now let's execute that. Remember, phone number is integer. So let's see how that goes. Alter, perfect. Refresh. There we go. We change it from integer to characters, varchar. Now let's see how we can use alter statement to remove an existing column. So if you just want to get rid of this messages pane here, just hit control R. It would go away because the moment you execute that, that, that uh, screen will come back again. Okay. So alter table, and then it's going to be the customer table. So you see that I'm using this interchangeably. I can call the table without the schema name, or I can call the table with the schema name. Either ways it works. Okay. And then I'm going to say drop a column. And which column do I want to drop? 
I don't care about the customer's middle name, so I'm trying to drop that. So I'm going to drag and drop it here. Okay. So I'm going to drop that. And because we are dropping the column, we don't need to specify the data type before you can drop it. It's just the name that needs to be identified so that you can drop it. Okay. So let's run that. Command successful, refresh, middle name is gone. Okay. So now we've seen how to use alter statement. Probably is one last thing. We can also use the alter statement to, you see, we have the DBO schema. We have a DBO schema and then we created the staging. Let's move some of our tables into the staging schema. Okay. Let's do that. So we can do that by saying um, alter schema, then staging. This is the newly created staging schema. And we are going to transfer. Transfer what? DBO.customer. I'm saying that transfer DBO.customer to staging. Okay, let's see. It says successful, but it still says DBO. Let's refresh this table here. Nice. Now you see DBO for product, but you see staging for customer. So this is how to use alter statements. All right, now let's move on to drop statements. Drop statements. So drop statements are used to remove database object. We are about to remove a few things. So it removes the entire structure of the, of the, of the object you created. It doesn't leave anything. It removes the structure and it is gone. We can use drop statements to remove like, um, like tables, database, schemas, all these objects, we can use drop statements to remove them. So we can we can test it by you know uh, dropping a few things. We have two tables, product and customer. So let's drop drop table. Oops, I meant to say table. <laughs> drop table, and I want to drop my product table. Okay, I will type in product, and I run this. Is it cute? It says successful. So let's refresh and see if it's gone. All right, we no more have product table in our test DB. Okay, so now let's drop uh, the schema that we created. And we're going to say drop schema. And what was the schema name? Staging. And this is going to fail. And I know why it's going to fail, but I want to demonstrate it. So we're going to drop the schema staging. Now it is failing because we have objects currently tied to that schema. So what we can do is that we have to detach all those objects attached to that schema before we can drop it. Okay. So I'm going to copy the same statement and I'm going to say transfer. Now I'm going to say DBO. Okay. And I'm going to transfer it from staging back to DBO. So let's do this. Transfer. Is done and now we can drop our schema successfully. Perfect. So right now, because we transferred um, staging customer to DBO, we should see it here as DBO and we can drop the customer table as well. So drop table on customer. All right. So we no more have any tables in our database, but we still have our database called TestDB. This brings us to the end of our DDL statements in SQL Server. I will save the script in my GitHub repository, and then I will share the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.